Hello and welcome to Our Savior's Lutheran Church here in Fort Capel, Saskatchewan. Thank you for joining us this day as we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Advent together. We're using, as usual, the daily service of prayer at noon, which will have the words on for you at the bottom of the screen. We pray that this service will be a blessing to you and yours as we near ever closer and closer to the Feast of our Lord's Nativity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Listen to my prayer, O God. Do not ignore my plea. Hear me and answer me. Evening and morning and noon, I cry out in distress, and he hears my voice. Cast your cares on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous fall. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for the fourth Sunday of Advent is from Samuel, 2 Samuel, chapter 7. Now when the king lived in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his surrounding enemies, the king said to Nathan the prophet, See now, I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of God dwells in a tent. And Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that is in your heart, for the Lord is with you. But that same night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David, Thus says the Lord, Would you build me a house to dwell in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day, but I have been moving about in a tent for my dwelling. In all places where I have moved with all the people of Israel, did I speak a word with any of the judges of Israel, whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now, therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, that you would be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them, so that they may dwell in their own place, and be disturbed no more. And violent men shall afflict them no more as formerly, from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel. And I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. And your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle is from St. Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 16. Now to him who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but has now been disclosed and through the prophetic writings has been made known to all nations, according to the command of the eternal God, to bring about the obedience of faith. To the only wise God be glory forevermore through Jesus Christ. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the first chapter. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the same, and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great, and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, Son of God. 
And behold, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son, and this is the sixth month with her who is called barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. This is the word of the Lord. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you, from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Throughout Advent, the Gospel readings have been seeming to jump around. We began the season and the Christian year with the triumphal entry at the end of Jesus' ministry. From there, we moved back in time to just before his ministry with the beginning of John the Baptist's ministry, and we stayed there for two Sundays. Now we go back even further to the time of the Annunciation. Now, this may seem more appropriate as we near the feast of his nativity, but we are still in Advent. We are still focusing on his appearing, even though we are now oh so close to Christmas. And so let us this day consider the words of the angel Gabriel, whose name means the strength of God, as we continue to look forward to the appearing of Christ. When the Lord God sent his angel Gabriel to the Virgin Mary, it was only six months after he had previously sent him on a visit to the priest Zechariah while he was serving in the temple to announce to him that his wife would conceive in her old age. And the angel's greeting to Mary here is one unique in all the scriptures. Greetings, O favored one, the Lord is with you. Mary herself was troubled by the saying. It is a sign of her humility, for a proud person would not be troubled by this, but puffed up. And of course, she tried to discern what kind of greeting it could be. After all, all who have been born after the fall of Adam, our father, have likewise followed after him, being born in sin. While Adam and Eve were made in the image of God, Moses writes that concerning Adam's children, they are in his own likeness and his image. Yes, mankind still has that great dignity of being created in the image of God, but after the fall we bear the image of Adam, that fallen image and nature which has been corrupted by sin. This includes all who are conceived and born in the natural way. It includes those who are born to unbelievers. It includes those who are born to the most devout of parents. It included John the Baptist, whose birth Gabriel announced, and it included his relative, the Blessed Virgin Mary. All who are born, all who are born, are born with and in sin. No matter how devout Mary may have been, and we have no reason to think that she was not devout, she too was born in sin and was a sinner and in need of a savior. And she knew this. She knew this just as well as you and I know that we are born in sin and that we are sinners and in need of a savior. Thus the greeting troubled her. But while she is troubled and trying to discern the meaning of the greeting, the angel speaks again, clarifying to her, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. Here we see the reason for the greeting. Here we see why she is called the favored one. She has found favor with God. Now that doesn't mean that she's done anything in particular to find that favor or grace, because then it wouldn't be grace. Rather, it means that she found herself in God's favor, in his grace. She is favored because the Lord had chosen her of all the daughters of Eve to conceive in her womb and bear the son. A great and singular honor that no one else would have, making her truly blessed among women, because God in his grace had chosen her to be the mother of his son. He had chosen that in her womb his son would take on flesh and thus unite himself to mankind so that he could save it. It was fitting that as the fallen angel deceived Eve, who was the mother of all the living, 
by his words in order to bring sin, sin and death to all. So it was also that an angel came to Mary to tell her that she would be the mother of the one who by his death would bring life and immortality to all. And the name Jesus is even more fitting for our Savior, for the name of the God-man, for the name of the one who is both God and man in one person. For by his death and resurrection, he has brought us salvation. For that is what his name means. The Lord is salvation. The angel continued, He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom shall have no end. As we heard in our Old Testament reading, the Lord, through the prophet Nathan, declared to David that he would make him a house, and that his kingdom and his throne would be established forever. This promise of an everlasting kingdom and an everlasting throne established the promise that God would bring his Messiah through the line of David, a promise which was later confirmed through Isaiah when he spoke of the stump of Jesse. But it seemed that God was not going to fulfill his promise. It didn't seem like he could. The people of God could see that there hadn't been a kingdom for a long time, and the kingdom after the exile was really no kingdom at all. Even the one that was restored by the Maccabees, well, they weren't from the tribe of Judah, let alone from the house of David. They were Levites. And even worse, the current rulers of Judea under the Romans, the Herodians, they were Idumeans, that is, Edomites that had been converted to Judaism. There was a great temptation for God's people to doubt that he would fulfill his promise. Likewise, in all of our trials and afflictions, we are tempted to doubt that God will bring his promised redemption or that he will use these things for our good. But he did not fail his people. He did not forget his promises. He did not abandon them. <clears throat> he cannot, and he never will. See how faithful he is and how it is fulfilled here. Well, the people were tempted to think that God would keep his promise by keeping David's throne and kingdom exalted in a way that they would never fall to anyone ever again. And so they thought that the Messiah of God would come as a king, glorious and mighty. But that's not the case, for the one conceived in Mary's womb would fulfill this promise. He would come from a humble and poor family. This much is proven in that the only sacrifice that they could afford for Mary's purification after Jesus' birth was that of two turtle doves. But he is in the line of David both by blood through his mother Mary and also legally through Joseph, who was also from the line of David. For Gabriel says, God will give to him the throne of David, his father. Just like David did not inherit the kingdom by ordinary means, but rather God gave it to him, so also Jesus would not inherit the kingdom from Herod, which was Herod's worry, but instead he is given the kingdom by God the Father. And unlike Herod's kingdom, which was smaller and even more so than David's, the kingdom which Jesus rules is the house of Jacob. The house of Jacob, who is called Israel, that is, the church, the true Israel, the spiritual Israel. And his reign will be forever, his throne eternal, thus fulfilling all that the Lord spoke to David. And just as the Lord fulfilled this promise, he fulfills the promises which he has made to us, that because, that because he has justified us by faith, he will continue to sanctify us, and he will work through all trials and afflictions to bring about our eternal good. He will hear us when we cry to him. When we sin and turn to him in faith, he will forgive us for Jesus' sake, because he kept the law perfectly for us. And on the last day, because of what he has done for us, 
Because he has given to us the gift of faith in him, he will raise us in resurrected bodies which are restored like his, which are free from the corruption of sin, because he was not born by ordinary means, but by a virgin. And this is what leads Mary to question the angel, not because of doubt, like Zechariah, who doubted Gabriel and was reprimanded, but instead she asks out of wonder that she, a virgin, would conceive. The angel responds, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. It is not by man, nor by the will of men, nor by the power of man, but solely by the power and working of God that she would conceive. Like the burning bush which was on fire and yet not consumed, the Virgin Mary would have within her womb God himself, and she would not be destroyed. For the child to be born of her is both God and man, Son of God begotten of the Father before all worlds, and also the Son of Mary conceived in her womb. This is done only by God's power and out of love for humanity, whom he desires to save. The language of overshadowing reminds us of the tabernacle, when after the sacrifice was placed on the altar, after all was finished for the first time, the Holy of Holies was overshadowed by the cloud which represented the presence of God, and a flame came forth from the presence of God and consumed the sacrifice and lit the coals, so that all future sacrifices would be burnt by this fire provided by God himself. So the one sacrifice for the sin of the world would be conceived by the power of God alone and would be provided by God himself to save us. And just as the virgin birth of Christ Jesus was foreshadowed by all the miraculous births in the Old Testament and even up to the birth of John the Baptist, so today our rebirth points back to the virgin birth of Jesus. For our new birth is not by flesh or blood or by the will of man, but instead by the will of God and the power of the Holy Spirit. All who have been reborn, who have been regenerated, had not done so through their own power. No, it was the Holy Spirit's work. Whether it happened in holy baptism as an infant or whether when later as an adult hearing the word of God, no matter how, our rebirth came about through the Holy Spirit. And so as new creatures, born again by the work of the Holy Spirit, we say along with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. As servants of the Lord, we give our Amen. For that is what Amen means. Let it be so. In our prayers and praises and offerings to God, we say Amen. Let it be so. Trusting in humble faith that the Lord will bring about all that he has promised, and trusting that our praises of him are true. Our days filled with spiritual sacrifices of ourselves to God through our vocations and works of love to our neighbors and in all men, let it be so. Trusting that through what we have done, God has worked through us as he promised. When we receive the Lord's body and blood in and with the bread and wine in the Holy Supper, we say, Amen, let it be so. Trust in, trusting that he gives these things to us for the forgiveness of our sins and the strengthening of our faith. And we pray that when the Lord calls us to himself at last, we may say, Amen, let it be so. Trusting that he who has called us, redeemed us, and sanctified us will take us to himself at last while we await the resurrection of the dead. Amen. Let it be so. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord, have mercy upon us. O Christ, have mercy upon us. O Lord, have mercy upon us. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come, and help us by your might, that the sins which weigh us down may be quickly lifted by your grace and mercy. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, 
one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray as our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.